Hey, this is Linus, what's up? And here's the OnePlus 5. You know, each year the company creates a hype about their new upcoming flagship killer device and it's great because in the past we've seen some great phones made by OnePlus. Those phones had bleeding edge specifications, great build quality, great displays and a lot more other features. But this year the OnePlus 5 costs about 500 bucks or even more than 500 bucks and in this review I will try to answer the question if the OnePlus 5 is worth the price. Stay tuned. As usual, the phone comes in the OnePlus style box where all the items are packed neatly. Besides all the usual stuff, you get the OnePlus sticker and a super fast dash charger. Right off the bat, you will notice that the phone is very similar to the iPhone 7 Plus and that is obvious from a metal backplate, dual camera setup and plastic inlays for antennas. Things are different on the front as we have a usual OnePlus look. A 5.5 inch display is still 1080p but I'm absolutely okay with that because it's punchy, it's vibrant, sharp, it has deep blacks and it has a decent outdoor visibility. Also, we have a familiar button layout that consists of nicely backlit capacitive keys which are highly customizable and they have a nice haptic feedback. Also, we have a ridiculously fast and accurate fingerprint scanner. It unlocks the phone 10 out of 10 times. A lot of users appreciate a highly customizable multi-color notification LED light and I like it too. A 3 position notification slider is back and I have always loved this feature as it serves well in practice. When it comes to optics, we have one of the most powerful setups that are available on the market. Well, at least on paper. The OnePlus 5 sports one 16 megapixel shooter with f1.7 aperture lens and electronic image stabilization that is based on the gyroscope sensor. There is another 20 megapixels camera with f2.6 aperture lens, phase detection autofocus, 2x optical zoom, and dual LED flash. On the front we have a beefy 16 megapixel selfie shooter that uses f2.0 aperture lens and electronic image stabilization as well. Overall, the build quality is great and the phone is comfortable to hold in the hand. However, the volume rocker moves and rattles a little bit which is a shame to see on a $500 phone. Hopefully, this is my unit only as I already dropped the phone a few times. When it comes to hardware, the OnePlus 5 is one of the most powerful phones the money can buy. I have a 6GB of RAM and just 64 gigs of storage model but if you pay extra you can get a phone with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of non-expandable storage. As expected, the phone just flies through everything and all the latest and most graphically intensive 3D games work fine. I did notice, however, that the phone gets quite hot after 30 minutes of gaming and then a little bit of lag kicks in but I can't really complain about that. If you follow my channel, you probably know that Oxygen OS, that is based on Android 7.1, is one of my favorite implementations of Android ever. Well, the looks hasn't changed much, it just looks like stock Android with plenty of features, customization options and little tweaks to make the phone look your own. Just name a few, I love the ability to customize the capacitive keys or choose the on-screen buttons. You can also choose from quite a lot of gesture controls and quick launch features that work just great. My favorites include double pressing a power key to open up the camera, drawing a V to open up the flashlight or a classic double tap to wake feature. Obviously, there are some other cool features to play with but the most important thing about the OnePlus 5 is the speed and fluidity. I've said it a couple of times already but I think that the Oxygen OS is probably the fastest Android operating system. All the apps open up and close fast and honestly, it's impossible to make this phone lag. 
the camera app can take pictures very fast. There are some shooting modes like a pro mode that allows you to adjust some image settings. Also, there is a slow motion video mode and a portrait mode that allows you to utilize that secondary camera sensor. The portrait pictures usually look pretty good and we have a nice bokeh effect. However, some of the pictures came out out of focus. You can also take pictures with 2 times optical zoom. The quality is definitely better than using a digital zoom but there is quite a bit of noise left in the images. The daylight image quality is very good. There is plenty of detail, the pictures come out sharp and the colors look nice. Also, the phone has auto HDR mode so the dynamic range adjustment is usually good. However, this is not a true flagship grade quality as the Samsung Galaxy S8 takes better looking pictures. The low light camera performance is pretty good for a $500 phone but if you compare the pictures side by side with the Samsung Galaxy S8, we still see that the OnePlus 5 is lagging behind. A 16 megapixel selfie shooter is just great. The pictures come out sharp and detailed and the quality is actually even better than on the Galaxy S8. I'm recording in 4K resolution with the OnePlus 5. The 4K video quality is good yet not great. I love that there is plenty of detail, the colors look nice and the continuous autofocus feature works fine. However, there are quite a few video artifacts going on and most importantly, the footage is shaky due to the lack of optical image stabilization. I'm shooting a video with the OnePlus 5. I switched the resolution to 1080p. The 1080p video quality is good and the footage is much better stabilized but naturally there is less detail. Also, there is a little bit of jello effect going on since the phone uses a gyroscope sensor to stabilize the footage. The 1080p selfie video quality is quite good and I'm happy with the sound recording quality too. However, I noticed that some video artifacts kick in if you shoot under direct sunlight. Resolution, and this is the maximum resolution this phone uh, can shoot videos. So yeah, I'm comparing the quality of footage with the Samsung Galaxy S8, and the reason why I do that is because OnePlus bragged a lot about the camera quality. In general, I think that the OnePlus 5 has great all-around cameras for a $500 phone but it is still lagging behind the true flagships like the Samsung Galaxy S8. The loudspeaker quality is great, it's loud, the sound is balanced and rich. However, I don't like the placement on the left corner because I usually ended up covering it up once I held the phone in the landscape mode. The sound quality via the headset jack is good too, I have no complaints here. As far as connectivity goes, I didn't have any issues at all. The signal reception and the call quality have been excellent, the Wi-Fi speed and range are great and finally, the GPS is very accurate. The phone has most of the sensors including a gyroscope so you're all set in this department. One thing that you have to know is that the phone does not have a micro SD card slot for storage expansion. The OnePlus 5 has a 3300 mAh battery that performs quite well but I expected a bit better results. I usually manage to get about 4.5 or 5 hours of screen on time but your results may be better since I'm quite a heavy user and I usually install a lot of apps and lots of social media accounts. Dash charge is still one of the best in the business. It takes just about 1 hour to fully charge the device. So in conclusion, we have to answer if this phone is worth the price and what you're getting for those 500 or more dollars, yes, right? So first of all, the design is subjective. Uh, then the build quality is good yet not great because at least on my unit, the volume rocker rattles, which is kind of a shame to see on a $500 phone. Also, you're getting a great display, despite the slower resolution, it's not like 2K panel, but 1080p is plenty enough, and we have AMOLED panel, which is sharp, and D-blacks, all the stuff. 
Also, this phone is just ridiculously fast. Like, honestly, it's impossible to make this phone lag no matter what you do with it. Either you just scroll through the menus, open up or close apps, or play even the most graphically intensive games. This phone just flies. Other features, the battery life is, is good, yet not great. Hopefully, we'll see some improvements with future software updates, but the dash charge feature is just awesome. But there are a few things to consider. For example, the camera is very solid, very good, yet it's not on the same level with the current flagship devices that actually cost more money. But OnePlus actually bragged a lot about this phone's camera, so we expected to see true flagship grade quality. This phone has a great camera, yet not the best. So in conclusion, if you want a truly great phone that has great build quality, a lot of RAM, it's fast and fluid on the daily basis and all the things that I covered in the review, the OnePlus 5 is a really solid phone, but since it costs like $500 US, you should also consider some other phones, for example, the last year's flagship, the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge. I think you can get it for less than 500 bucks. I also heard that you can get some deals on the LG G6, which is a great phone and it also has some cool features like water resistance. So my final conclusion about the OnePlus 5 is, it is a great all-around phone, it's a solid phone for the price, even though it costs like 500 bucks. But if you're looking for the phone in this price range, you should also check out what the competition has to offer. What do you guys think about the OnePlus 5? Would you buy the OnePlus 5 or last year's flagship, as I said, like the Samsung Galaxy S7 Edge? Let me guys know in the comment section down below. And as always, if you have any questions, please drop me a comment. You can hit me up on Twitter, on social media, like on Instagram or Facebook. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And I think, yeah, see you in the next video soon.